morning, pilots. Welcome back to the Flight of Faith. The last couple of weeks, we've gone all around the world, but today we're coming to you right here from New York City's St. Patrick's Cathedral, where I was ordained a priest just seven years ago. St. Patrick's Day, in fact, is next week. And while the day actually celebrates a Roman Catholic bishop who served as a missionary in the 5th century, bringing the good news of the gospel to the people of Ireland, it's also a day to celebrate Irish-American heritage. But what St. Patrick's Day is most unfortunately associated with is drinking way too much Jameson and Guinness. Now, speaking about thirst, I was recently speaking with a group of young men, and my throat got a bit parched, so I said that I was thirsty, and all the boys just fell out laughing. Now, I soon realized that to be thirsty has a different meaning for them than it did for me. I had the vague idea that it meant something like sexual desire, so I googled it. And the New York Times says that thirst, in recent slang, describes a graceless need for approval, affection, or attention, one so raw that it creeps people out. Google also provided me with an answer to a frequently asked question, what is a thirsty woman? Briefly, a thirsty chick, now this is, quote, I'm not, this is not my words, this is Google's words, quote, a thirsty chick is essentially a desperate woman and as often is the case with desperate women, her priorities are out of whack. She's lost morally, emotionally, and or psychologically. And this brings me to Sunday's Gospel, which is about the woman at the well. In this passage, Jesus is traveling with his disciples through Samaria, and they stop at Sychar, where there was a well for water. Jesus sat down while his disciples went off to get some food, and while he's at the well sitting there, a woman came to draw water. She came at midday to get water when the sun is at its highest and people generally stayed inside. The reason she was there at this strange time was that she was lost morally, emotionally, and psychologically. So she was a thirsty person in more than one way. She had been married five times and was now living with a man who was not her husband. But this is the interesting thing. Our Lord knows that authentic love is not what you get from someone, but what you can give to someone. Jesus offers the woman right away living water. That is the Holy Spirit, the wellspring that springs up to eternal life. The woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water always so that I might not be thirsty again and have to keep coming back here to draw water. She knew that this man was offering her something that her heart longed for, that she had been looking for in all those other people that she had lived with. This man, who, who didn't really know her, but in some ways knew her better than anyone else, wanted to satisfy that deep desire of her heart. In fact, for generations, the Jewish people had prayed in Psalm 42, As the deer longs for streams of water, so my soul longs for you, O God. There's something of this desire in our hearts. We have infinite desire. We were made with a capacity for God. What some people have called a God-shaped hole that only he can fill. On the cross, on Good Friday, Jesus will cry out, I thirst. It's at a time when blood is pouring forth from him. He's literally loving us with everything he's got to the very last drop of his blood. He's willing to give everything for you, and he thirsts for a return of his love. He's looking for you to love him in return, for it's in giving that we love authentically. One last thing. This week, we also have the great feast of St. Joseph, the husband of Mary and the guardian of the Redeemer. Besides being a church feast, it's also an ethnic feast for Italian-Americans on which delicious custard-filled pastries will be consumed in large quantities. So St. Joseph lived with that living water within him, the Holy Spirit. He loved Jesus and Mary with chaste love, that love that gives. He embodies strong masculine virtues that many of us men should try to imitate. He was a construction worker who most likely helped build the ancient city of Sepphoris, but he was also a husband and a father who raised the Savior of the world. So, St. Patrick and St. Joseph, pray for us that we might receive the Holy Spirit, the living water, 
and we might love God with our whole hearts. God bless you, pilots. <laughs>